Hi and welcome back to another tutorial. In today's video we're going to learn all about creating a conditional column in pandas based on a condition or multiple conditions in another column. Let's get started. So to start things off I've already put in some boilerplate code here just to load a sample pandas data frame. You can see that we've imported pandas using the alias pd. We've then created a data frame df using the from dict method. So really what we're doing here is loading four different columns. We have a name column, an age column, a birth city, and a gender column. I've kept the data frame deliberately small so that we can review the entire data frame to see exactly what's happening as we progress through the tutorial. If you want to follow along, I also have the entire tutorial available as a written tutorial where you can find all the code available within this. It's linked to in the description below. There's many different ways in which you may actually want to be able to create a new column based on a condition in another column. The first may be simply filtering down based on a binary condition where a value is either one thing or another thing. So let's imagine that we want to create a column based on our age column. We want to be able to create a new column called age category that identifies whether or not a person is 40 years or older. So the way that we can do this is by using the loc accessor. And to start things off, what we'll do is we'll first assign all the values in that column the exact same value. So let's do this to start things off and then we'll dive into setting the conditional column. So we'll call our new column age category and we'll simply assign it the value of 40 plus years old. So when we print this out now, we can see that every single record in that column actually has the value 40 years plus. Now, we know that that's not true because we have Kate and we have John who are still in their 30s. So how do we actually access these values and change just those values? What we can actually do is use the loc accessor. What this does is it creates a Boolean mask, meaning that either our condition is met or it's not met. And when that condition is met, assign it a new value. So what I mean by that is that we can simply write df.loc, and then in square brackets, what we want to do is first pass in the column and the condition that needs to be met. So in this case, we want our age column to be less than 40. And then in the second piece, we want to assign the column for which we want to set the new value in. In this case, that's age category. So now we can simply say less than 40 years old. Now, when we do this, it's actually going to filter down our data frame or really select only those rows where the age value is less than 40. So it's gonna select the Kate column and it's gonna select the John column, but then in our age category column, it's going to set the value to be less than 40 years old. So when we run this now, we can see that this has successfully happened. Now, this works really well when you only have a binary selection. Of course, we could create another Boolean mask and simply be able to pass in, you know, if we want the conditions to be less than 30, give it this value. But that becomes very difficult to read. If we have multiple conditions, what we can actually do is use the numpy select function. The numpy select function does exactly that. It selects different rows based on conditions. And when those conditions are met, we can then assign a new value in a new column. Now, let's follow along in this example, but what we wanna do this time is split out our values into less than 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, and 60 plus. So the way that we can do this is first we'll import NumPy as well. So we'll import it using the NP alias. Now what we're going to do is actually create two lists. The first list is going to be all of our conditions. The second list is going to be the corresponding values that we want assigned. So what we're going to do is create a new list called conditions. And within this, we're going to pass in all the conditions that we want to meet first. So I'm just going to split this across different rows. You don't need to do this, but it just makes it a lot easier to read. 
So our first condition is that the age column has a value of less than 30. So now that we have a list of our conditions, we also need to create a list of all the corresponding values that we want to use. So I'm going to create another list called values here. And within this, we're going to follow the same order that we have here and enter in the values that we want displayed. So our first value will be less than 30 years old. Then our next one will be 30 to 39 years old. And so now that we have all of this set up, we can actually use the numpy select function to assign these conditional values based on another column into a new pandas column. So what we're gonna do is create a new age group variable, and we're gonna use the numpy select function, pass in our conditions, and pass in our values. Now let's print out our data frame and see what this looks like. So we can see here that we've been able to successfully pass in multiple conditions and multiple corresponding values using the numpy select function. So both of our people here, Kate and John, who are in their 30s, are correctly labeled 30 to 39 years old. Um, Melissa is labeled correctly in the 40s, and Matt's labeled correctly in the 60 plus categories. Now, in many other cases, you simply want to look up a value in another column and then return those values in another column. So what I mean by that is I'm just gonna get rid of this piece here. Say we wanted to create a new category called birth country. What we wanted to be able to do is pass London the value of England, Paris the value of France, Toronto the value of Canada, Atlanta the value of USA. The way that we can actually do this is by using the pandas map function. And so what this means is that we take a dictionary of key value pairs and we map that dictionary into another column to be able to extract for the corresponding keys the values into another column. So let's create a dictionary here. So we'll call this city countries and we'll just pass in a couple of values here. So let's say London, we'll pass in England, and we'll pass in USA. Now I've deliberately left out Toronto to be able to show how to work with missing values here. So what we can actually do now is if we wanna pass in a new value of birth countries, we can simply write df.birthcity.map, and now all we need to do is actually pass in that dictionary. So when we fill in birth uh, city countries here, we're actually passing in those values. So now let's print the data frame again and see what this looks like. So we can see that we were able to successfully map in all of the countries for which we had corresponding key value pairs in our dictionary. You'll notice here that Toronto is, has a missing NAN value here. Now the reason for this is that our dictionary didn't actually have anything in here. Now, we can of course figure out where Toronto is, it's in Canada, we can add that to our dictionary, but what if we just want to be able to handle those missing values directly? For that, we can use the fill in a method. So we can actually chain this in here to be able to say that any birth city that doesn't have a, birth, a corresponding birth country gets labeled as other. So we can do this by writing fill in a and then simply passing in other. Now when we run this, we can see that Toronto gets labeled as being an other birth country here. So for the last example, what we're gonna do is take a look at how to be able to map in a function directly into a column to be able to act on different conditions. So for this, we're gonna take another look at our age group example. So the numpy select function can take a little bit of getting used to, but it has many, many advantages over this approach because it doesn't iterate over every single row, but instead applies a vectorized format, which lends itself to much better performance, especially when working with large data sets. This approach, however, is a bit more familiar. So to be able to illustrate this, we'll start off with a very small example. So we can use the apply method to actually apply a function onto a different column. The way that we can do this is by simply applying the apply method. 
So say we wanted to be able to count how long each person's name is. What we can do is create a new column called name length, and then we'll simply take the name column and then use the apply method. And now we'll pass in the len function, which will return the length of each value. So now let's print out the data frame and see what this actually looks like. We can see here that it's correctly pulled out the length of each person's name. One of the benefits of this approach is that we can actually define our own functions to be able to call on this. What we're gonna do is actually define a function that returns a certain value depending on the, the person's age and return a, an appropriate age category for them. So I'm gonna clear out this code here and just quickly write it all out. So what we can see here is that we now have a function that takes a single parameter as its input and evaluates based on these different values returning a certain age category. So if the age that we pass in is say 22, then the value that gets returned is less than 30 years old. If the value is 55 years old, it will return 50 plus years old. So now in order to actually use this function, we can again use the apply method. So we'll create a new column and we'll call this age category and we'll apply this again to the age column. Now, what we're gonna do here is actually just pass in our age group function. Now, when we go to print this, let's see what this actually returns. We can see here that again, it's actually applied the function correctly by being able to parse out the different age categories based on the values in the age column. Now, again, I wanna remind you that this approach does have very big performance implications compared to the lope method or the select function in NumPy. The reason for this is that we're actually iterating over each individual row. This worked fine because our data set only had four records, but the bigger your data set is and the more conditions you have to evaluate, the longer this is gonna take. I really hope that you learned a lot from this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you have any feedback about these videos or anything you'd like to see covered more, feel free to leave me a comment. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.